that we need to do is solve a triangle like this. I draw a picture. Pictures are great in so many situations, and that a triangle is one of those. So however you draw it, it doesn't really matter too much. Draw it that way. This label A, angles A, actually get in the habit of marking the angle C, A, and B. We'll say little C, little A, little B. Okay, we'll start labeling things here, 95. Maybe we'll put it in the triangle. Look at C is 35. And uh, side C is 18. So we've got the law of sines. That's, that's this thing. When I say the law of sines, I mean this. Sine of A over A equals sine of B over B equals sine of C over C. That's the law of sines. And you can see that each of these fractions consists of an angle. And what, what do angle A and side A have to do with each other? They are opposite each other. Opposite each other. Side B and angle B, angle C and side C, they're all across each other. So each fraction involves an angle and the side across from it, uh, opposite it. Um, so to use the law of sines, you can think, well, I, I need to set up an equation with at least, well, with two of these, with two of these fractions, two of these fractions. If I set up this equation with these two fractions, I can see that I need, there's one, two, three, four variables. I need three variables, and solve for the fourth one. I can only have one variable to solve for it. So I at least need A and A, or B and B, which means I need at least an angle and a side across. Okay, that's what we can Law of sides, angle, and Opposite side. Those are the two things that I need. And then something else, of course. I can't just have an angle on the opposite side, but it needs to be one more thing. So if you see, if you're given an angle on the opposite side, you're going to use the law Here we go, using the law of sines. Look, look at these pairs of, of angles and sides, and we determine, well, <coughs> I guess we do. What's something we can do first? What can we figure out first? We've got two sides, one angle to figure out. The third angle. That's, that's an interesting one to find. How big is this angle? Uh, 50. And there it is right there. It's 50. It's got to all add up to 180. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't take too long to figure out that half. That would have to be 50 degrees. Okay. Thinking in terms of like pairs of things, pairs of angles and opposite sides. Um, so, thinking in terms of angles and their opposite sides, they, they come in pairs. You think they're coming in pairs when you use a lot of sides. Um, what pair do you have? What pair do you know? C and C, uh, angle C and side C. And so, what might you solve for? Solve for A, sure. Or B. But A was said first. So, you're going to solve for A. And <coughs> sine of A over A equals sine of B over B, or A over sine of A equals B over sine of B. Put those fractions over. That's what I like to do so that my variable that I'm solving for is in the numerator. I don't have to deal with that issue. A over the sine of 95 equals uh, C, that's 18, over the sine of C, that's 35. So I'll say, how do we get A by itself? Okay, cross multiply. Uh, a times the sine of 35 equals 18 times the sine of 95. And divide by the sine of 35, so A equals 18 times the sine of uh, 95 over the sine of 35. Then we'll have A. We'll figure out what A is. That's A. And X will solve for B. I'm just going to use this guy again. In fact, 
because if I could use A and you know angle A and side A, but 31.26 is an approximation. So I'm just going to do this. Any other problem? So I think these theta B and theta A, just because this is the angle of descent, the angle of ascend. Okay, and I put a little note here. Descend means go down, ascend means go up. So the angle of descent would be the angle between the vertical, let's say the angle of the Triangle out of the, the scenario described is 100 feet uh, perched uh, at a height of 100 feet, and it flies over here to, to a distance of 125 feet away. I assume that's a horizontal distance. So I know that the tangent of theta, the descent angle, is equal to 125 over 100. So the tangent of some angle is 125 over 100. How do I get at that angle? How do I figure out that angle? Is? I'm to find an angle that has this angle, so I'm going to have it right. Reverse tangent. Okay. Now, reverse tangent is not a bad name. That works pretty well. It's actually it actually conveys what it is. You've got the tangent, which takes the angle tells you the tangent. And you got the reverse tangent, which takes the tangent and tells you the angle. But the real technical name is what? Inverse. inverse tangent. So reverse tangent, inverse and reverse are pretty, pretty similar. I just want to want to clear that up just in case you are talking near your butcher and you talk to the inverse tangent. One point three four degrees. Fifty one point three four. And this uh, should mark with a, a right angle. Then all the angles should have to one eighty. So this angle of ascent, as it comes back, should just be the angle that would make everything add up to one eighty. So we'll just take uh, ninety minus fifty one point three four. It's already 90, so these have to add 90. And that would be something. Here, we'll just subtract 90 from this, it'll give us a negative, but 
I would say it's positive. 38.66. There's a couple problems. You've got to draw that picture. You found the inverse tangent of 4.1. What does it mean? Yeah. Well, it's not the same thing. 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 Yeah. says to give the answer in both radians and degrees, how do we get the same answer? Well, well, it's obviously degrees and both degrees. How do we get the same answer in radians? have our answer in degrees, how do I convert it to radians? I don't want to change my own to radians. And I convert to radians to something from the quiz. Something like that. Which is it? One of you will fire, fire one. Pi is radians, pi radians. 
We want to be left with radians. Right? We want to cancel uh, out degrees. This is how many radians there are. We're going to cancel out those degrees. 76.29 degrees. And this we're going to cancel out those degrees. So I'll just take this and I'll multiply this by pi over 180. <coughs> Sign of this solution, you should get negative 0.22. And okay, so let's just start there. How are we going to find an angle that we can take the cosine of that angle and get negative 0.22? Well, we have an angle here. We're going to take the cosine of this angle and we get negative 0.22. How do we find that angle? Find an angle that has a bigger than 90, so somewhere right there. That isn't too 0.7. What do we know about this angle? Cosine of negative 0.22. when it has a cosine of negative 0.22. I don't know what the sine is. We can figure out what the sine is. You can just take sine of It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what the sine is. You know what the cosine is. <coughs> so we can kind of feel like we're done. We got an angle. It has a cosine of negative 0.22, except for this guy says, I want the angle between 180 and So, can somebody come up and draw an angle between 180 and 270 that has the same cosine as this angle? It doesn't have to be a masterpiece, it's got to be somewhat. Give a shot. Let's draw an angle between 180 and 270, you know what that is, and then just have the same cosine as the angle that I have. This angle is between 180 and 270, so it would be actually the angle measure would be this. But we can just like how big would that be? Okay. Yeah, that's up. Okay, let's label that. That's how big that would be. But what I mean that's true. But they do want it to be between thank you. Between 180 and 270. So we gotta figure out what is this angle. Cosine is the x. As you go around the unit circle, cosine is x, sine is y. So this point, since you did your best to draw it as like a mirror image, right? Uh, it has the same x value, it has the same cosine value. So it has the same x value, it has the same cosine this angle does. cosine. And the sine would just be the opposite of the question mark up there. Um, so how do we figure out how big this angle is right here? Maybe there. Okay. Yeah. Track 90 from 102.71. That's it? No. Oh, <coughs> that number is Subtract it from 270 and 270 today. Okay. So you figured 
out this little guy, and then you took that little guy away from 70. That'll work. <coughs> 2.71, subtract 90. OK, that's whatever that is. And then we take that and subtract it from 270. That'll work. You added 90 to it? Okay, let's see what you did. 180 minus 102.71. That's what you said first, right? Yeah. Oh, and then add. Well, you added this to 180. So you figured out what this was. And then, well, that's the same as this. Mm -hmm. You started at 180 and added that. How about if we do 360 minus 102.71? That's the way it should work too. 360 minus 102.71. All of these are going to be exactly right. They're all great. Um, if we take these though, like if you can add this 180 and this 180, and that becomes 360, right? 360 then minus 102.71. Uh, this guy here. If we take 270 and we subtract a negative 90, that's going to be plus 90, 270 plus 90 will be 360. Take all those and, and they can all simplify to that one. Just to prove that they're all doing the same thing. <coughs> Anything else? Pythagorean theorem, where you subtract this from 90 and figure out another angle that all it asks you about. Questions about any of that? The last one, the previous one? This one? Yeah. What is that? Oh, I didn't remember that. 257.
we might come up, you know, they might give us information, and we wind up getting no triangle possible. And this, this all comes out of side side angle triangle. <coughs> side side angle, angle side angle, side angle side, all these things we learned in geometry, right? No? We learned, but we learned them in the context of congruence of triangles. Um, can you like describe to me what a side side angle triangle is? In that order, okay, so how, how could you describe to somebody if they didn't know what that meant in that order? Well, if you have a triangle. Okay, I'll draw a triangle. And then you're given one side. Okay, a side. And you don't have that angle. You don't have this angle. And then next, you have this side. This side. side. And then you have an angle opposite. You know that. Well, why wouldn't I call it a side angle side? I would say, right? As you look at the triangle that you've drawn and you put all the stuff in that you know, uh, the order is what gives a side side angle. And if you go the other way, you go angle side side, but you don't do that well, Side side angle. And like we don't do side angle side because to go from side to this angle that we know, we have to skip over an angle that we don't know and a side that we don't know. Two things that we don't know. And if you sat down and thought about this for a while, like if you're given three pieces of information about a triangle, uh, the most stuff that you can skip over that you don't know would be two things. You can skip over an angle on the side, and then you skip over the side of another angle and you can that, you, uh, that you do know. So kind of keeping those rules in mind, never skip over two things when you could just skip over one thing that you don't know. So we skip one angle that we don't know and we're to a side that we do know and then we're next uh, next to the other thing. Never skip over two things that you don't know, and that'll keep you from getting these things out of order. So a, a true side angle side would be where I'm given a side, and the next thing I know is an angle, and the next thing I know is a side. It's like all of it as, as, as closely uh, grouped together as possible. Closely as I can group them together. So erase that. Now we have we see what the side angle side is. Uh, so first, let's look at an instance where we don't get uh, any triangles. We'll start with the zero triangles. Let's start with the easiest one. It's the easiest way to see that there's no triangles. Let's say that I tell you that angle A is <coughs> 103 degrees. Okay, so this, this case is going to be the obtuse case. What does obtuse mean? Larger than 90 degrees. Okay, so 103, obviously, is larger than 90 degrees. Uh, I will tell you that side A is uh, 3, and some other side, you can say B or C, it doesn't really matter. B is 2. Can you tell just by looking at those three pieces of information that you assign <coughs> that it's clear that there's no triangle possible? Anyone looking at it? Well, nobody's coming up with any reasons why there wouldn't be a triangle possible. Yeah, because the uh, C has to be the biggest angle, and no, it's not right. Yeah, so that, mm -hmm. a lot of times we try to make C the biggest angle on the biggest side. But when you don't know all the angles and sides, then it's kind of hard to make sure that happens, I guess. Um, in this case, A, well, A is 103 degrees. Is there a bigger angle than 103 degrees in the triangle? Is that possible? Like along with 100? Yeah, along with 103 degrees? No. 103 degrees, let's see. They all have to add up to 180. 103 degrees there. Uh, so the rest of the degrees would be. Uh, 77 degrees. So the other two angles have to add up to 77 degrees. So obviously, the angle cannot be bigger than 100 degrees. All right. Uh, so once you get past 90, that's going to be the biggest angle, for sure. Or 90 or bigger. Um, so this is 103 degrees. 
if you draw a picture of it, it'll be um, a little more clear one. There's just no way that this could be a triangle. There's no way that we can connect these three things with three sides and three angles. So this is 103. This is the side across from it. It's also is called A. A. Let's just call this one B. B is 3. Now that we draw that picture, you see Obviously, the longest side would be across from the largest angle, which this has to be. This couldn't possibly be a triangle because the hypotenuse is showing that it's shorter than one of the shorter sides. Not possible. So the circle is very hypotenuse then? Yeah. It's the longest side. Try to draw this with these three things. This side would have to be like that long. Right? That looks like it's about three compared to the other five. And no matter what we do, like we don't know what this angle is, so we can kind of mess with the side and, and move it around. But there's just no way that we could make a triangle out of this. Even if I put this side down here, it's still not going to make it down this side down here. There's your obtuseness. The obtuse is a little. Obtuse, you have a big angle, you have an angle bigger than 90. The side across from that needs to be longer. If it's not longer than this other side, then there's no triangle possible. But if it is longer, even by a little bit, that, that. if it's six, then Well, if, it, if it doesn't go together like that, then, then maybe a, a side that was six would, would connect like that, or, or maybe uh, it's too long to be six, maybe it's like that. But at some point, a side that is six will connect with this bottom <coughs> side, and the side could be five, the side could be 103, and we're just going to figure out what these angles and uh, this side are. Even if that side is just the tiniest bit smaller, or the tiniest bit bigger, like 5.1. And if it's just a little bit bigger, I'm going to just go like this. And if you really, really see a triangle, that would be a triangle. So there's your first case. If If this thing that's supposed to be the hypotenuse is being uh, said to be shorter than some other side that's supposed to be shorter than this, okay, so let's look at the acute case. And the acute case is not as easy to see. Okay, so.
the case where this angle is smaller than that. Um, This will be angle B, 35 degrees. So let's approach it like I'm going to recommend you approach it um, as you're working to solve that. If I ask you to solve a triangle and it's like this, I'm going to say, try it. Let's just try and solve it, all this stuff. Okay? So using the law of sines, uh, this is angle P, this is side B, and this is side A. A, C, and So we're going to solve for it first using the law of sines. Solve for A, angle A. Okay, let's do that. So, angle A, we're going to put that in this equation, sine of A over uh, side A equals the sine of 35 over 5. So first, let's multiply by 16 on both sides, and we'll get a cancellation of 16. We have two people writing anything down. Okay, so here's the sine of A is equal to, let's figure out what that's equal Does anybody see anything? Too big. What do you mean by that? You want to talk about that in the previous class. How is the biggest sign possible is one? You look at your unit circle and see that. Up here at the top, at 90 degrees, the biggest sign you'll ever find is one. And everything, all other signs are smaller than that. But this says that the sign of the angle we're looking for is a sign of one point. <coughs> which is impossible. Right there we should notice that that's too big. So let's pretend like we don't notice that and we just continue on, try to find angle A. How would we do that then? Um, 1.84. Here we go. Inverse sine 1.84. Function is the inverse sine, and we're, are we putting something into it? And isn't that thing that we're putting in an error? That's what it's trying to say. If we go to it, it'll tell us what the problem is. Uh, and it's that. <coughs> like, it's kind of saying, if you put a closed parentheses here, this does not work. You cannot input 1.84 into the inverse sine. Okay. Now, if I take that and uh, divide it by 2 or something like that, then it will be okay. Right. It will be possible. But 1.84 is not possible. But for this triangle to exist, this angle has to have a sine of 1.84, which is impossible. Okay. 
So inverse sine of 1.81. Now, if you didn't notice that this side is too long, or not long enough, excuse me, this side is too long, this side is not long enough, and you have a cute case, and you try to do all this work, well, then you just get an error as well. Just tell you that's not possible. Uh, you need a, an angle from another dimension that has uh, a sign that's impossible in this dimension to make this triangle work. Also, <coughs> here to make this triangle work, this is impossible. Um, so that would be. <coughs> What I would recommend to figure out that there are zero triangles possible, you just start working on it, unless you notice it's up to, so you just take a second and think, is this about this long enough? Okay. And if it is, then keep working. Here it's harder to tell because this is 35 degrees, so I don't get the guarantee of this being the biggest angle. It's less than 90, and so you know, maybe you could work out. Okay. It turns out that this side is just too short. That's why it's not working. But in reality, this side is more like this. Right? It's too small. It's not long enough to even at the shortest distance to go straight up and down, it's not long enough to make a triangle. To go from here. If this angle is 35 and this, this side goes out as far as 16, 5 is not enough to get down. So two times when there might be zero triangles, we may have an obtuse angle, pretty clear. And we can see that before we even start our work. And here, I think the ease, there is a way to figure out how long this side would have to be. But it's a bit of a chore. And it works just as well as, as doing your, probably takes about as much time as doing your work and figuring out that there is an error. Okay. So we'll just stick with that. And if you're curious, the other way. <coughs> the other way involves taking this guy and we'll find the sign of 35 and see how this compares. I just think it's an easier way. I think it's an easier way. Now let's look at the case of one triangle, which is just one. Only one, exactly one. Let's the case of the one triangle. Um, yeah. so again, remember this is side side angle only. And the thing about side side say side side angle is the only one that has these weird things that will happen. Otherwise, if the information is given in any other way that you can use law signs, it'll just be one triangle. You won't even have no triangle property. You won't have errors, you won't have two triangles, it'll just be a triangle. So when you have side side angle, that's when you have all these possible uh, angles. You have the obtuse case. If there's one triangle possible, there's only one triangle possible. You don't have to have an acute angle for this to be that second triangle. Okay? So for obtuse, if this is bigger than 90, and this side is the longest of the sides that they tell you, so that have to go this side and this side. If it's the longest, then you're going to have a triangle, you're only going to have one triangle.
So let's put the stuff in here, 48 degrees, 28, C, and C, and B. And it doesn't look a whole lot different than uh, the one that we just did and got an error. Let's give this some, some side lights. Uh, Let's go ahead and tell you there's just going to be one triangle, and you'll know that there's one triangle possible because you'll do the work and it'll all work out. So let's do the work on this one. Uh, this will be called uh, or angle B. solve for little a, when we use the law of sines, we would need to know what angle oh, a was. Never mind. Okay. So we know c is c, so that's something that we involved. We know side b, so we'll solve for the angle b. So the sine of b over 20 equals the sine of 48 over 28. Sign's too big. Is that going to happen? Find out. 20 times sine of 48. Divide that by 28. Is that too big? Could you have a, a sign of an angle of 0.53? Yeah. Well, this is not bigger than 1. It's smaller than negative 1. All right, so this is going to work out. We just need to do the work. Sine B equals 0.53. So let's take, take the inverse sign of that. So this the second answer. We'll plug that right in there for me. 32.06. B is 32.06. Didn't get an error this time. Everything's working out. So there must be a triangle possible. Okay. We don't get any error. This side must be long enough. It must not be too short to reach down and make a triangle. It's at least long enough to make a triangle. Well, we know this is 48, this is 32.06, and we can figure out this angle. What would that angle be? Probably because you forgot to close the parentheses somewhere. and get into the tutorial. 
triangle thing right now with this triangle. Let's do the two triangle case and see. Now, how will we be able to tell if there's two triangles possible? How will I know to even look for that second triangle? Yeah. So, why is that option triangle that has a square? If it's greater than the triangle. So, what I mean by the obtuse case is that the angle that's given. <coughs> Okay, so let's look at the side side angle. That is the two triangle face. And that will only happen for acute triangles. So what I'm trying to picture for you here is that there's these three things that are given, the side to side of the angle, and they are, they are locked in. And that's how these locks are. Right. You can't change. But the things that can change are this angle and this side. That's why this side is so long, because it, it could be whatever it needs to be. To make it work. And this angle down here is, could be anything, right? Let's figure it out. If we find out that it's 30, great. If we find out that it's 15, that's fine. Whatever, that's kind of up in the air. So, if this is possible, you know, I'll be able to make this side, the side and the other side of the angle come together into a triangle. And then we'll figure out that that side was that long, this angle is whatever, that angle is whatever. So, let's do some work on one that turns out as two triangles possible. The Possible, we'll, we'll start to do this work, and I'm going to have you do this work on your own. But we'll start to do this work, and we'll get an error, and we'll know there's no triangle. If we do the work, and there's no error, and you've found a triangle, we'll solve for all three pieces, and there's a triangle. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to solve this triangle straightforward, you know, use the law of sides, find an angle, find another angle, find a side, uh, do all those things. Just uh, some practice for you. All right, I'm going to run this real quickly. Hopefully, we did something similar to this. We have this angle and this side. So that's going to set up one fraction in this law of sines. We also have this side, so we're going to solve for its opposite angle. So we'll take the sine of C over 88 equals the sine of 70 over 85. So we'll multiply by 88 on both sides. The sine of C equals 88 sine 70 over 85. And to get C, we'll just take the inverse sine of this number, whatever it comes out to be. 
a whole lot like what we just did with this one, right? Similar kind of work. We did the same equations just with different numbers. And so, how come this only has one triangle possible, but somehow this has two possible? So let me show you how this other triangle gets made. It all has to do with, like, this angle is locked, right? It cannot be changed. It has to be this big. We can't change it. This side is locked, we can't have change this length, but we can't alter it, right? We can't think of it being whatever it's locked in. This is locked in, but you know what we can do? As long as these three things stay the, the size that they are, I can bring this over here, and it fits right there to make a second triangle. Here's my question to you. How can I tell just by looking at it like this <coughs> that could happen? That I could make a second triangle. I'm not looking at me, but looking at the board. Think about the things that were given in the beginning, that would be 70 degrees, 88, and 85. How can I tell? Since there is a triangle plot, it is possible, like it's not this side is too short. It is long enough to come down and make a triangle. How can I tell if there's a second triangle box? Why would this be able to come over here and fit in there? Well, all that is, 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 is yeah, definitely working together. Um, what, I mean, what if this side happened to be really long? Like, well, this long. Mm -hmm. Then could it swing over it and fit inside there? Mm -hmm. No, it's too long. And then once you go past there, then it's not the same triangle. Like, this is not the, this isn't the actual angle in front of this triangle. It would be like this other angle. That, that doesn't work. You have to be able to fit it in there, but it's too long. It can't fit. How do I know by looking at the information they gave us originally that it could fit it over there? That side. Yeah, so it's shorter than this side. It's it's obviously long enough to make a triangle because we did the error. But it's also short enough to fit over here because it's shorter than this side. Shorter than that side. So 
now all we have to do is figure out how do we find that other triangle. Like what we're going to do. Put that over here. Shrink this down. Start over again with the, the information that we were given. That, but we'll say we're looking for this triangle right here. What I'm doing now is, is drawing the other triangle, this triangle. Okay, I'll take some of these things, make them kind of faded. in here is an image of that other triangle. Right? It's going to help us see how we're going to find this. So we'll, let's go over what we've done so far. We found that these three pieces of information are sufficient for making a triangle. Basically that means this line is long enough to make a triangle. It's not too short. We don't think it's <coughs> we come over here, we know it's long enough. We know it's also short enough because it's shorter than this side. It's short enough to fit in here and make another triangle. Really all we need to do is be able to figure out what this angle is and all the other stuff becomes exactly the same as this right about. How will we find it? It's all we need to know. Uh, this is how we find this angle. I'll find it like Do you know how big this angle is? How big is it? 76 or 60. How long is this? How long is this? Also They're the same. This is what we call an isosceles triangle. Two equal sides. So what does that mean about this angle? Also 76.62. So if this is 76.62, then how big is this angle? Or how will we find it? Use the complementary. Which one? Complementary or supplementary? Supplementary. The one that adds up to 180. The one that adds up to 180. So what is the other one? I'm going to take 180 minus this angle and figure out what that other angle is. What is that? This angle is, we just have to add to 180, just the same way as we found this. After that, we find this side right here, exactly the same, exactly the same as finding this, except for this angle will be different. This will still be 85, this will still be 70. This angle will change to whatever this angle is. And after that, it's all added. So they give you the information, just go for it. See if there's a triangle. If you get an error, no triangle. Okay? If you do find a triangle, then just ask yourself, is this side short enough to fit over here and make a second triangle? If it's shorter than this side, then the answer is you need to find a second triangle. If it's longer, then there's no way it can fit over. And so there's only one triangle. You can mind this all for side side angle. Always draw a picture, imagine that, that, that one side swinging over and make it second. Time.